It's time again for Talking Trade, sponsored by MMAC's World Trade Association and Michael Best Strategies. Welcome to Talking Trade. I'm Sandy Siegel, president of ME Day. My guest today is a returning visitor, Chris Wojtowicz, and Chris is an international trade consultant with the Small Business Development Center and also currently the acting chairman of the Wisconsin District Expert Council. So welcome back to the show, Chris. Thank you, Sandy. Happy to be here and, and always, always uh, appreciative of the opportunity. Terrific. So, you know, as a consultant and working with the Wisconsin DEC and, and you're active in the trade community, so I, I always feel like you have your finger on the pulse of, of what's, you know, got people curious, interested, concerned in, in trade and, and especially new uh, potential exporters and so forth. So um, tell us about some projects you're working on or what you're seeing in regards to development, concerns, things going on in, in the export community and then what's on everybody's mind these days. Well, sure. Uh, well, as you're, uh, uh, you're, no, you're no doubt aware that the, the pulse has been pretty rapid lately. Um, boy, everything from logistics and supply chain to world events. Uh, I mean, uh, today we're recording this on the day of the great eclipse. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's just uh, amazing to see all the different events that are out there and how they affect our supply chain, our logistics uh, in our international trade. Um, seeing, a, seeing a lot of uh, continued uh, opportunity and growth uh, with the ports of uh, uh, Superior and Duluth. Um, as people may recall, uh, a month or two or so ago, uh, the administration was up uh, in Superior uh, touting a, a billion dollar investment in, in, the, in the bridge project, which will have some really great uh, payback, if you will, for, for the region uh, shipping between Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, of course, and in dare I say, North Dakota and Canada coming into the right. Port. Yes, yes, it is a, a, um, a, a direct trade line with Canada. Um, yeah, I, I, may, I am aware of it. In fact, we're, we also have as a guest uh, the port director from Duluth Superior um, on one of our talking trades. So um, we'll be excited to learn more about that. But yeah, that's exciting. So absolutely. Yeah. And I hope they have lots, uh, lots to continue to talk about. Uh, around the state, we're seeing uh, really cool opportunities in foreign direct investment. That's something that we really don't talk about quite a bit. But, you know, uh, between Japan, uh, China still investing, of course, Mexico investing, uh, Italy. Uh, it's just been really kind of neat. Uh, uh, later on uh, this week, we'll be talking with some folks with the uh, uh, Council General and uh, from Thailand. Uh, that'll be in Milwaukee. Uh, so a lot of things just going on. It's really exciting. Right. And are you orchestrating meetings? How are you working with, you know, your customers with someone like, you know, the uh, Thailand administrate coming in and so forth? Sure. So as you know, with the, with the SBDC, we really get into the weeds with our clients. And uh, a lot of times we're transactional with them. Uh, they come in they need something they go back out they they do and come back and forth um when an opportunity comes up uh, like this Thai general uh, council is this is a a meeting that's free uh put on by Foley uh in uh, in Milwaukee yeah, anybody can attend and um we go out and tell our clients especially those that have that interest in in Thailand to say here's a great opportunity for you and we can yeah. we Try to forward that along, and, and we do that with a lot of uh, a lot of our, our Wisconsin ecosystem members, whether it be Mita, uh, whether it be the DEC, of course, Commercial Service, uh, uh, the Ice Group, any any of these folks. We export tech, especially. We try to make sure we get those words right. out. Right. Right. Well, we're gonna t we're gonna talk a little bit more about the program coming up. I know we're asked all the time you know, by our customers and, and work hard at how, how to keep them in touch with some of the resources out there and, and all the opportunities. And we try to promote all that in our newsletter because uh, there are a lot of great 
programs out there. Um, and any recommendations you have on on people, you know, being aware and keeping in touch on what's going on in the trade community? Well, um, the District Export Council uh, has just uh, re how do I say this? Relaunched, relaunched their website. Uh, they have an events page, and the goal for that is to uh, reach out statewide uh, for all international trade-related events to be posted for free there. So uh, regardless of the group, if it has an international focus band, we, 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 we would like people to come to that website and come to that calendar and see the offerings of our uh, great Wisconsin uh, ecosystem. That's awesome. All right. Well, and we'll be sure to, to link that as well, because, um, again, it's trying to spread the word because there are a lot of great resources that, you know, people aren't aware of. Um, you know, you talked about Thailand, and I know we see more and more interest in people shifting away from China and looking at other um, options and diversifying supply chains. Um, I think um, some of the recent events, we have all realized just how fragile our supply chains are. Um, you know, certainly the, the collapse and uh, the bridge in Baltimore, um, that, you know, the earthquake in Taiwan, um, you know, all the events you, you mentioned just at the beginning. Um, again, just another reminder how, how fragile our supply chains are. Um, what, you know, what are the conversations you're having in terms of diversifying, avoiding supply chain disruptions with, with the suppliers you're working with? Well, uh, COVID was a great teacher yes. uh, from a couple of years ago, because that was that, uh, I don't know anybody that wasn't affected. And, you know, I, I, I bang on it quite frequently about, you know, good managers will anticipate the unanticipated right nobody knew that this was going to happen certainly not at you know one was it 1 30 in the morning and all of a sudden wham and, and you woke up to hear the news and you know what a shocker and you know if, if that were a larger port say new york new jersey uh, los angeles wow we'd be at a, a, a even greater i mean don't i'm not trying to diminish what happened in baltimore but you know, when, when you look at the scale, uh, the size of that port versus the others, um, the underlying message is just that. You have to have an alternative um, plan. You know, uh, back in the day when, when things, I don't know, I guess maybe they weren't reported on or it didn't seem to be as bad, but when we were exporting from one place to another, uh, perhaps there might be a, a port strike or congestion in the port of Los Angeles. Well, we could switch our bookings to the port of Seattle or uh, the port of uh, Vancouver in, in uh, British Columbia, right, Canada. And sometimes that was easy, sometimes it wasn't, but it was an option. And yes. we need to continue to to look at that. I mean, folks that are importers, you know, they realize how uh, how desperate a situation can turn when a typhoon hits China, yes. right. right? Right. And and that has lasting effects, and then a ripple effect. Well, you know, if you think about uh, think about it this way. You know, if, if you're going on that family vacation that you've planned for for quite a long time, what are you going to do uh, when the Baltimore airport's fogged in? Right. It's temporary, but it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect you for a few hours. Uh, and, uh, and if you're connecting airplanes, you know, land in Baltimore and then go to a, a, another country, are you going to make that connection, right? Yes, right. So when you put right. it in terms of that, that's the fragility. What is yes. this? And I, you know, I I question myself. I feel like there's more awareness now. So, you know, we've been both doing this a long time. There's always been disruptions, but I think we're all a little more mindful of how significant the disruptions can be. And, you know, as you say, the ripple effect and having the plan B. Um, and at least, you know, being ready to make some quick decisions. Um, you know, sadly. Things are often too far along the process to to pivot easily, but you know we try to to help navigate that as well. And um, I, you know, 
Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about it more and more um, as it just seems there's a lot more. Um, I feel like the supply chain and the volumes, I think as a whole are more fragile than ever. And, um, you know, it's getting a, a lot of attention and how, you know, how we all diversify and, and stay um, agile, right? And in, in being able to react to those things. Um, I wanna be sure we give enough time to, to promote and, and, and share with our listeners on the upcoming trade day on May 9th um, that the deck is putting together. So um, tell us a little bit, you know, again, reminders to everyone Everybody, what the deck does in general, sure. how you help you know promote Wisconsin exports, and then tell us about the program on May 9th. Well, uh, well briefly, the the Wisconsin's District Export Council uh, is a volunteer uh, group of individuals that were appointed by the U.S. Secretary of Commerce uh, because we all have some sort of uh, expertise in international trade. Um, we support the work and the efforts of the U.S. Commercial Service uh, located in Milwaukee um, for Wisconsin and great, great group of people there at the Commercial Service. Uh, if you haven't engaged with them, you have to reach out. They are very knowledgeable and, and, and very, very efficient at what they do. So the deck is here because we provide companies with, you know, free advice, uh, free assistance. We you know, we can get in the weeds with you on a question or, uh, as I like to say, you can always reach out to me. And if I don't have the answer, I know someone that does. That's one of the 28 deck members, right? And and they're there to help you with uh, all facets, facets, whether it be trade compliance, uh, trade risk and finance, um, you just you name the topic. I bet you we have an expert on it. Um, Chris, thanks for joining us again on Talking Trade. Thanks for all the work you do with Wisconsin Deck and, and the community. And uh, great to see you again. Great to see you too. <laughs> so terrific. All right. Thanks for joining Talking Trade. You've been listening to Talking Trade, sponsored by MMAC's World Trade Association and Michael Best Strategies.